Hello everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Records video. Today I'm going to be talking about the 5 best albums from 1956. And 1956 is an interesting year in the sense that this is a year with some beautiful songs and some of the best vocal performances recorded. Legendary vocal takes. I mean, well, I'll just go ahead and start off with on the number 5 spot. Odetta sings ballads and blues. I'm not sure if everyone around here knows Odetta. Odetta is actually one of the most important artists in, um, actually in the way uh, blues developed, in the way rock and roll developed. Why? Well, she was one of the first, if not the first, to get hold of an electric guitar. And she started singing the blues with an electric guitar, but the type of playing she does on this electric guitar, it is amazing. She is a guitar virtuose. Virtuose is the right word, right? Yeah. She's a guitar virtuose. And especially, I mean, she made a lot of good records. This record, it is awesome. It kicks ass. And the strange thing is, it's not just her guitar playing, which is amazing. And it's even... Hard to, when, you, when you hear it, it's hard to imagine that she was doing that at that moment in time. I mean, there's so much going on there. It's not just guitar playing, it's also her voice. Her voice has such a full strength. I mean, God, this is one of the most recognizable voices. As a matter of fact, the combination of guitar playing and voices, she's somewhere around the top. I mean, what she does, just with that combination, I mean, it's... It's as recognizable as an early Dylan recording. And she has just so much atmosphere, emotion, understanding of the lyrics going on. It is an incredible album. It's a, she's an incredible performer. Let us not forget Odetta because we owe a lot to her. And not only because of the historical facts, it's also because when you put this on, you listen to her. But you can forget all historical elements because it just rocks. It's blues. It's it rocks. She is awesome. Now the number four spot. One of the big big geniuses in the world of jazz, Charles Mingus. And now I'm gonna do the impossible. At least the impossible for me. I'm gonna try to pronounce the title of this album, Pithecanthropus erectus. Pithecanthropus erectus. Now, correct me, because I know it's wrong. I'm, it must be uh, wrong. By the Charles Mingus Jazz Workshop. Obviously, Charles Mingus. This is one of the great Charles Mingus albums. What can I say? It's always tough to put words to what Charles Mingus does to a song like A Foggy Day. And this is not the only time the song A Foggy Day is in this list, as a matter of fact. He has just this way of interpreting things. And, and w w when you listen to, to this album and you hear what he does with a band, with an atmosphere, with the people involved, it's just crazy. This man is awesome. It's an awesome record. And um, this thing is still available. I mean, this is the speaker's corner pressing. It goes for about, about 30 or 40 bucks. It's audiophile quality. It's an audiophile label. And you can get one of the best jazz albums by Mingus and one of the jazz, best jazz albums ever for about 30, 40 bucks. So awesome, really awesome. Now, another legendary album on the number three spot. 1956 is really a year for legendary vocal performances. And what we have here is Ella and Louis. Oh, just titled Ella and Louis by Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. Oh, this is quite the combination. This is one of the best collaborations in the history of recorded music. They go together like Simon and Garfunkel, but both of them put more to the table in a 50-50 collaboration. So this is not a sneer towards our Garfunkel. I think he's really great, but Ella and Louis is just a great duo. Uh, they are a great duo. And again, this is the song of Foggy Day. Um, Ugh. What can I say? This is one of the first records that made me fall in love with jazz, with vocal jazz. I, I mean, I'm gonna use the word warmth again, but it is such a warm, intimate record. It is 
really inviting. I, I, I wasn't interested in jazz initially a couple of years ago. I thought, nah, jazz, jazz, jazz. It's from time to time, you know, but, but I'm not gonna be a, a vinyl jazz record buyer. And then a friend of mine got an analog production pressing of this. This is not an analog production pressing, this is a d first d Dutch pressing. Um, this is, um, but, and, and I heard what was going on. Oh, holy, oh. This is pure magic, pure magic. Try and find a copy. It's not too hard. It has been reissued a lot of the times. You, you see it a lot in uh, record bins. I believe I paid about five euros for this first Dutch pressing. I mean, I call it a bargain. Number two. Frank Sinatra, Songs for Swingin' Lovers. One of the best Frank Sinatra albums. Oh, this is so good. Why is it good? These are his highlight days. I mean, he has the smoothest voice. He is a crooner with the incredible capacity, a vocal capacity that's beyond anything. And you can listen to it about anything from this era. But this album has, sit tight, you make me feel so young. Um, um, we'll be together. We'll be together again, making Whoopi. I had a focus, you know. Uh, um, so many great songs. You're getting to be a habit with me. Uh, Love is here to stay. I've got you under my skin. There are pennies from heaven. There are so many hit songs on this album. It is incredible. It sounds incredible. It's produced brilliantly. It's awesome recorded. And again, this is not a record which is very expensive. I, I, again, I paid five euros for this. I found it in Frankfurt one day. Um, first British mono pressing. Awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And it's romantic. I mean, this is one of the great romantic albums. If you put this on and you, you get as close to the voice of Frank Sinatra as you're ever gonna get, it is. it sets the mood. It sets the mood. Now, best album from 1956. 65, 56, 56, damn, I should, uh, I should sleep better. Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley, man, this is awesome. Why is this awesome? A lot of people say that the value of this record is mostly historical because Elvis Presley uh, conquered the world and uh, this is an iconic photo and it is an iconic photo and it's an iconic cover art design. I mean, just, just the cover alone is awesome. And people think, some people say, yeah, but it's really the singles and uh, the, the, the singles were the value of Elvis Presley at the time. But if it comes down to singles and great songs, this album is all it. I mean, bear with me. Blue Switch Shoes, I Got a Woman, Tutti Fruity, Blue Moon. It's all on here. It's all on here. Now, why is this so amazing? I've always loved Elvis, but when I first hear this initial record, and you hear the sincerity in his voice, you hear somebody who is a raw force of energy. The way he starts the blue switch shoes, I mean, you're sold, you're sold. This was a moment in time which is so powerful that this decades after this, it still has that power. Why does it still have that power? Because Elvis is convinced with what he's doing. You can hear in his voice that this man has something new to bring to the table. And I agree with the people who say, yeah, of course, Elvis Presley was a white artist who played black songs for a white audience. Yeah, that, that, I agree with that because there are great rock and roll artists who do not get enough recognition. Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Nevertheless, you cannot not acknowledge what was going on with Elvis Presley. He was more than just someone who whitewashed things, you know. He was an essential 
great rock and roll voice in those days. And what he does on this album is legendary. It rocks. It still gets the room going if you put this on. Now, those are my five favorite albums from 1956. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.